We usually look for inspiration from old site of the day winners, but this time we are diving into something super recent. This website won site of the day just this past Friday and it had some really cool animations. I couldn't resist recreating a few of them and in today's video, we are building this interactive portfolio page that caught my eye. Something I thought you'll find useful too. We'll cover everything, the text animation with the line split effect, the image animation and of course the smooth sliding gallery on the right. All done using JavaScript and GSAP. I even made a version that includes a blurb preview of the selected item in the background so I'll show you how to add that part as well. If you are interested in the source code, it's available through the pro membership where there is a 70% discount on your first billing period right now. Check the link in the description. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's kick things off by setting up the container. First, we'll create a wrapper for the blurry preview in the background. It's going to hold an image with an overlay where we'll apply the blur filter. Next, we'll split the container into two sections. One for the site info on the left and the other for the project details on the right. In the left column, we'll add a simple navigation with a few links, followed by a header section with some placeholder text. Below that, we'll drop in some dummy copy to match the original site layout. On the right side, we'll create a section called Project Details where we'll display all the key elements. This includes the title, a description, credits and details about the director and cinematographer. The title will be an H1 and the rest of the info will be wrapped in a paragraph tag. For now, we'll add some placeholder text that we want to display when the page first loads. Next, we'll create a div with the class project image where we'll place our image. Finally, for the small gallery slider on the right, we'll add a wrapper, apply overflow styling and insert the gallery container. We'll leave it empty for now since we'll dynamically create the gallery items using JavaScript later. And that's it for the HTML. The basic structure is in place, so let's move on to the styling part. Let's start by setting some global styles to reset margins, padding and box sizing for all elements. Then we'll define a full viewport width and height for the HTML and body using a dark background color and a custom font. For the images, we'll make sure they fill their containers completely by setting their width and height to 100% and using object fit cover. Next, let's style the headings and text. The H1 elements will have white text, a medium font weight and a font size of 36 pixels. Links and paragraphs will also have the white text and a slightly smaller font size of 16 pixels while maintaining the same font weight as the headings. Now moving on to the layout. The container will be positioned relative and take up the entire screen. We'll use Flexbox to align columns and hide any overflow. The blurry preview section which contains the blurred background image will cover the entire screen. Inside this section, the overlay will apply a strong blur filter to give us that blurry background effect. We'll divide the container into two columns. The site info on the left will flex and align its content vertically, with a border separating it from the right section. Inside this column, the navigation links will have some spacing and the header will be vertically centered. On the right, in the project preview, we'll add the project details. The project details will be positioned near the top, holding the title, description and credits. We are using clip paths here to animate the text. We initially push the elements down, hiding them behind the clip path. We'll later reveal them by animating their Y position to zero using GSAP in JavaScript. Thank you. 
for the image in project image. It will be positioned at the bottom left and will make sure it stays inside its container by setting overflow to hidden. Now for the gallery on the right, we'll use the gallery wrapper with a backdrop blur and overflow. Inside, the gallery will be laid out vertically with gaps between the items. Each item will have a subtle overlay. When we click on an item, we'll animate the overlay making it disappear smoothly. Lastly, I've added some media queries to ensure the layout looks great on mobile. This includes adjusting the flex direction to column and resizing certain elements to fit smaller screens. I'll paste those styles in so the layout adapts seamlessly for mobile devices. Now let's move on to the animations in JavaScript. Before we dive into JavaScript, let me tell you that I've created a separate file that holds an array of objects with each object containing the data for one item in our gallery. Right now, I've got 15 items in the list and each one includes the title, description, director and cinematographer details. We are going to use this array to dynamically generate the content for each item when it's clicked using JavaScript. First, we need to import the gallery items array from the data file. Once the DOM is fully loaded, I'll start by grabbing all the elements we need, the gallery container, the blurry preview section, and the project preview section. We'll also store the number of items in our gallery using item count, which is the length of the gallery items array. I've also set two variables, active item index, which keeps track of the current active item, and the flag that prevents additional clicks while the animation is playing. Now let's create a function called create split text that uses the split type library to break down our text into individual lines. This function will wrap each line in its own div and span which gives us control to animate the line separately. Just FYI, GSAP's split text plugin is paid so I think this is a great alternative that you can check out if you are looking for a free option. First, we initialize split type by passing in the element we want to split, specifying that we only want to break it into lines. Then we clear the element's original content so we can rebuild it with the split lines. For each line, we create a div with the class line and inside that a span to hold the text content. We append the span inside the div and finally append the div back to the element. This allows us to target and animate each line individually. Now if you remember, we initially hide the project details for the first item using CSS. So we need to make sure when the page loads, those text elements are visible. So next, I check if there is any initial info text to animate. If there is, we pass the text into the create split text function so it's ready for the upcoming animations. So I'll select all the elements that will animate using GSAP. This includes the H1 titles, the info text lines, as well as all the credits, director and cinematographer details. Using GSAP, we set their initial position to Y0 so they are ready for animation later. Now let's move on to generating the gallery items dynamically. We'll loop through the gallery items array to generate our gallery. For each item, I'm creating a div with the class item and for the first one, we add an active class. We then create an image element, set its source dynamically from our assets and add the title as the alt text. The image gets appended to the div and we store its index for reference later. Each item has a click event listener attached so when clicked, it triggers the handle item click function. Finally, we append each item div to the gallery. Now we'll create a helper function called create element with class to streamline adding new elements with specific classes. It takes a tag and class name, creates the element, adds the class and returns it.
Next, we'll build the project details dynamically with the create project details function. For each active item, we'll create a structure that includes the title, description, credits, director, and cinematographer details. I've set up an array, detail structure that holds the tags and class names for each piece of content. We loop through this array, creating div elements and filling them with the corresponding content from the active item. These divs are then added to the new project details section. We also create a new project image container, add the image for the active item and return everything including the split text for later animation. Now, let's break down the handle item click function, which is responsible for switching between gallery items when a user clicks on them. We start by checking two conditions, if the clicked item is already active or if an animation is currently running. If either of these is true, we return right away. This is important because we don't want to allow multiple clicks to interfere with the animations, keeping everything smooth. Next, we set the flag to true, which will prevent any other clicks from being registered while the animations for the current selection are running. We then grab the clicked items data from the gallery items array using the index that was passed to the function. This gives us access to the title, description, director and cinematographer details for the selected item. At this point, we update the gallery's visual state. First, we remove the active class from the previously active item and then add it to the newly clicked item. This change is reflected right away on the gallery by highlighting the active item. We also update active item index to track which item is now active. Moving on to the animations, we start by selecting all the elements that needs to animate out the title, the info text, credits director and cinematographer. We also select the current project image and prepare it for scaling out. Now to update the blurry background image, we create a new image element dynamically. We set its source to the new image for the selected item. Apply the necessary styles to position it and insert it into the blurry preview container. To create a smooth transition, we animate the old blurry image to fade out and the new one to fade in using GSAP for the fade effect. Next, we animate the text elements. Everything slides up and out of view, giving the appearance that the old content is being cleared away. The current project image is also animated out by scaling it down and moving it up. This creates a smooth transition effect as the old image disappears from the viewport. Once the animation is complete, we remove the old project details and image from the DOM. This clears the stage for the new content. Now we create the new project details and image for the clicked item. We use the create project details function to generate the new content, which includes the title, info, and all other details. These new elements are then appended to the project preview area. We also apply the create split text function to the new text info, splitting it into lines so we can animate the text in just like we did earlier. Finally, we bring the new content into view, the text slides in from below while the new project image scales up smoothly into its position.
Once everything is in place, we reset the flag to false, allowing the user to click on another gallery item and trigger the next set of animations. That's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.